Hey everyone, TJB Chris here. Welcome to part two of the Model 3 restoration. In my last video, we pretty much determined that the CRT driver board isn't quite working right. And in fact, while I was trying to diagnose it, it malfunctioned further. So I was pretty sure I had another board lying around to a similar era. And actually I do, it's this one. So this one was taken from an early Model 4 that actually I had bought and had shipped on eBay. It's the very last one of these I've ever shipped on eBay because between terrible packaging and typical carrier treatment of packages, it got destroyed and the CRT it actually had been placed in the box so that the CRT monitor was facing up, but even so it just snapped all four of the stands and it broke off the neck on the back of the CRT and that was it. So the CRT got recycled, but I figured there was no reason not to keep this. Now I don't know if it works or not because of course the, the tube was damaged when I got it, but I'm going to put this in place of this one here. I'm going to pull this out, just do a quick cursory glance to make sure they're about the same or are the same. There are different drivers over time. This is analog, both of these are. Judging by the look I've done so far, these look to be exactly the same or at least close enough that I should be able to get them to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take note of how the wiring is all done, where they're all going. Take copious amounts of pictures to make sure I get all the color-coded wires in the right place when I put the new one on. We're going to discharge the CRT, which I'm actually going to do now, and then we're going to start to remove this. Alright, so to discharge the CRT, uh, the machine is turned off, but is plugged in, and this way the chassis is all grounded. And we need a good ground to make sure this actually discharges. I wouldn't want to not hear a pop and assume that everything is fine. So what we're going to do is I've got an alligator clip attached to a screwdriver here, and we'll attach it, and then hands away, other hand away, very carefully kind of go up under, I can get it under there. There we go. Touch the metal, you can kind of touch it, nothing's happening, so we should be safe. Now, I, even knowing this, tend not to like to touch these, so I'm going to do my best to not touch the metal lead on this. I'm reasonably convinced that having sat for about 24 hours now, and the fact that I just grounded it out, we should be safe to work on this. So what I'm going to do now is pull the main console out of the way here so we have a little more room to work, and we're going to pull out this CRT board after I get my pictures, and we'll put the new one in and wire it up and try it out. Alright, so I've taken some pictures of this, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to remove um, the various bits here. I'm going to leave the flyback lead for last here, but I should be able to pull these off. Actually coming right off. You're coming off the neck here. Okay, that way when I pull this, I don't damage the back of the CRT. And that would have been bad. Next step, make sure I'm not touching this. There we go. And now we're ready to remove it. Oh, we've got one more. We've got this grounding lead here, which I'm actually going to make sure I remember where that was. There we are. Now, I think we have everything disconnected. We do. So, let's remove this board, shall we? Maybe we'll get an idea of what actually went wrong with it. So this is the old board. I see a little stuff out there. I don't know if that's a pop spot or not, but nothing obvious. Take a closer look. Anything on the bottom? Some rework. Interesting. Okay. So one thing I do want to do now is I want to compare the old and new. Uh, the main thing is I see how these wires are all lined up, and I know how they were. I want to make sure that corresponding color codes on the new board go to the same place, so I don't get strangeness with the image. Alright, so despite the fact that the wires are colored a little differently, obviously the lengths kind of help give them away, but um, this pink goes on the board here, back here, uh, where this red goes. Um, this, this other grayish but whitish one also similarly goes to the same spot. In fact, all four of these go to the same place, so as long as I can get these wired up correctly, I think we should be in pretty good shape. Again, old one on the right, new, the Model 4 one on the left. So I'm going to put this new Model 4 one in, 
get it wired up, double check the photos, and then we should be good to bring the Model 3 console back and try it out. All right, here comes the new board. Get the ground lead out of the way here. And we're just, everything looks like it's in. This is on. Flyback. I have double checked these. We had the red wire toward the front. Like I said, they all went to the same place on the board. On this one, the darker wire was on the back side. White wire is toward the front. So I think we're ready to plug this in and try it out. I have preemptively removed the smoke detector from the ceiling for when it explodes. I don't even know if you can see this screen. We're gonna turn this all this way a little bit and see if this works. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but maybe we'll get lucky. Ooh, I sealed it up. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we have some image, but it's, uh, we only have, uh, we don't have any horizontal, so something's up there, but I do see the cursor blinking, so, yep, so that's, let's take a look at where we are. So that's there, I need to check some connections and stuff, but actually, oops, you can see that it is doing something, and if I Turn it up. There we go. That's contrast. That's the brightness. Don't want to do that too much, but I think that's kind of where we're at. So the question now is, I have to go and see what happens. See if I can figure out what the cause of this is. Do we just have a connection problem? Do we have an issue elsewhere? So that's where we are. But hey, it's an improvement. I actually see something resembling an image on the screen. Hey folks, it's another day. And uh, after some stewing on this and some work off camera, uh, did some uh, some testing with the scope here and trying to figure out if I was getting various well, mainly horizontal sync signals to places given the, the things we were seeing. I decided I would break out the top to one of my um, closet model 4's here. This is a kind of working machine. The machine mostly works but it has some underlying issues but either way the core model 3 mode portions, the CRT all works and it's the older Model 4 with the RCA style video in it, so I thought I would just try the lid on it and see what happens, and naturally what happens is what you're going to think would happen. When the CRT warms up, it works just fine. See the cast prompt. So, as the scope kind of showed us on the video signal, the machine's alive and well. Keyboard seems to work. And, uh, yeah, like, honestly, it actually seems to work quite well. So, you know, with that in mind, I got to thinking, well, I have the, uh, I have this here, I know the machine works. I also have my spare driver board that I found um, that gave us the mostly video, but down the middle of the screen. And I was like, is that, is that the coil, or is that the board itself? So, off camera, uh, this is the original CRT and the original board from this particular shell from my Model 4. Um, but I swapped out the board. I thought, you know what, I, I had the scope on the, the other driver board while well, it was in the Model 3. I was finding horizontal and vertical sync signals in the right places. Things looked fairly good, so I was having a hard time trying to figure out, I'm like, eh, it really must be that coil. So what I did was, uh, I figured I can rule everything out on the board by putting the other board from my spare parts Model 4, this board here that I've been working on, in, connected to this CRT and see what happens, and naturally it did exactly what this one's doing. It worked just fine. So that was really good. So that tells me that the board I'm using is fine, My the, the backup one I found is fine. The one that came with the Model 3 obviously is not, so we have to take a look at that in depth, but I do have a working driver board for the CRT. So now I just have to figure out where in the coil everything is broken. So. I know the vertical part works because we could see that, you know, up and down on the screen we had we had some video, but it was the stretching of the video that was not working. So the next step is I'm gonna take a look at this coil and I'm gonna see, well not this coil, the one in the Model 3 shell, and see if I can find an obvious disconnect, and if I do, we'll repair it and then we'll try it out. If I don't find it, then uh, we'll go from there. Worst case, um, I think we should be able to find it. All right, folks, so I have the deflection yoke out. Um, I'm calling it the coil. It is a bunch of coils. It just, I'm learning this as I go, so, you know, deal. Anyway, um, so 
the way that this is oriented within the Model 3, um, the disk drives are on this side and then the left side of the cabinet, top, bottom. So this is essentially as though you're staring at it from the back of the cabinet. And so the way that this works is if I look in this side, I can see which coils are which. So I can see that these coils running down this side are the, the horizontal coils. And these running along the top and bottom, which you can see are kind of isolated by plastic, are the vertical deflection coils. And so we can test continuity on these. And the way that we do that is very simply by attaching the meter. And you can see here, so the top, this pin, what's, what's green here, I don't know if you can see that, green, is going to go to the yellow. So if I connect the green to the yellow, the meter says zero. Now, if I connect the other way, red, to the other side, I get nothing. Well, that's odd. So what I did was I, I scraped away. This coil has a little bit of a, uh, has a coating on it to avoid shorts. And so what I did was right here, these are the two bot, uh, spots that kind of go to those terminals that had no connectivity. So what I did was I wanted to see if the entire coil itself had connectivity, which it in fact does. If I run this, i got to hit the spots. That, there we go. Look at that. We have... We're good, and I can follow this in. So the coil goes here, up around here, and in. This is the top here. Goes around to the side, that's the horizontal deflection coil. Same thing with the other side. Here the red comes down, up and around under here, to the other side of the horizontal deflection coil. So this explains why I have no horizontal when this is in the Model 3. Now I have to find the sides where it's not working. Well, this is easy enough. We're gonna take the red here, and I'm going to stick that back in there because I apparently suck at hands. And we're going to see if I have connectivity here. Find the spot that I friggin... And we have no connectivity. Okay. So we're going to go to the other side. And we're going to hit this. And we're going to see if we get connectivity on this end. So this is the same one. Look at that, we have connectivity. So now I know the break is somewhere between here and here. So while I was playing around, I actually just kind of found that. So there you go. So what we're going to do is we are going to... I'm going to try and strip this a bit. i got to be careful not to mess up the winding on this at all, but I'm going to try and strip this. And I'm going to try and just put a blob of solder on it and try and solder it right to the edge here and see if I can get it to go. Um, hopefully that'll be enough to connect it and then we'll put it back in the Model 3 and we'll see if it works. But that is ended, what ended up happening. I'm really glad I took the lid from the working Model 4, tried that out, verified that the computer was functioning. I mean, I was pretty sure given the readings on the scope in the last video. That also gave me an opportunity to test the video driver board that I was working on. So. That ruled out any issues getting horizontal into the inputs here. If there was a problem on the board where the horizontal drive wasn't exactly working right, that would have you know ruled that out quickly and saved me this. But it turns out it looks like the coil is bad. So we're going to fix this coil and we're going to see if the Model 3 works. All right, soldering iron's warming up. I have a little celebratory or um, drown my sorrows whiskey. If this works, it's celebratory. If it doesn't, drown my sorrows. All right, so what I'm going to do with this actually is I need to scrape off some of the coating that's on this coil, and then I'll drop it back into the thing here. So um, i got to be careful not to break it, but I really just want to kind of just do this here. Just kind of scrape this off. Perfect. Okay, so I think I have that pretty well done. That should... I don't know if that shows up. It looks shinier, I guess, on the camera. I'm looking at the screen of my camera right now. Um, should do it. So now, we're going to put this up like this. All right, so meter out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if, if I have this um, bared enough, I should be able to read on this side. So I'm going to touch the other side of the coil. And what do you know? we have continuity. It's not perfect because I'm trying to get my finger on it. There we go, look at that. 
So I think that leads me to believe that this is open enough that if I get some solder on there, I should be in pretty good shape to have a connection. And when I put this back into the Model 3 case, I should have enough of a connection to give us a horizontal sink. So let's do this. Let's do a little test on the solder. The iron's been warming up for a little bit. Do we have... Looks like we do. There we go. Okay, so now this should... I should be able to test this as, as it looks attached. So let's get the meter back. Now if I test... Okay, so if I test from here to here, I'm connected. If I test from here to here, I'm connected. All right, let's put this back in the Model 3 and let's see if we have video on the CRT that came in the Model 3. All right, moment of truth. This is my modified joke. I don't know if you can really see the solder job I did in there, but you can see that's the wire that's kind of hanging out a little bit because I did that. All in, ready to go, deflection yoke. So it's the moment of truth, what's gonna happen? All right, here we go. Let's see. If there's a pop, I'm sorry you're gonna miss it, but well, I see the screen filaments lit. Oh my God. We're going to have to do some adjustment, but, whoa, oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we've got some adjustment to do, but, oh, look at this. All right, it works. Oh, I'm very happy about this. Oh, my excitement's killing me here. All right, uh, there is a horizontal and vertical adjustment on this. It's a little bright, but look at that. Oh, look at that, we did it. So the original video driver board that came with this had an issue, but the irony is we actually had two issues. Um, I still have to go back and look at that board and see what happened. It definitely had a little bit of a pop, but at the same time, there was a break in the coil. And I wonder if that kind of explains some of the weirdness I was seeing when I was shutting it off and everything was kind of down the middle. So look at that. Oh, that's that's just friggin' awesome. I'm sorry. Oh, where's my whiskey? All right, so cheers to the Model 3 being back. We've got some adjustments to do on it, but that's frickin' awesome. Mm. I don't know about you, but um, fixing these machines and getting something like this to work um, is just extremely gratifying. All right, so let me take a look around and see if I can find the adjustments just to make this a little less uh, funky. Ironically, I think I got the deflection yoke on pretty straight. It's not uh, turned at all, so um, you know I have a little bit of uh, tweaking to do on it, but overall it's really looking good. Um, better than I expected. All right, it's the next morning, and suffice it to say, I got this working last night a little too close to bedtime. So I didn't get a whole lot of sleep because I kept thinking about this machine. I should have just come down and play with it at one in the morning, but eh. As you can see, I have the screen lit up here, and I don't know if it'll focus on the camera here, but you can see that the left side of the screen is squashed. So there's some CRT adjustments I want to do on this. The left side of the characters are narrower than the right, and there's also some width and height adjustments I can do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make those adjustments, and I've learned a whole lot about CRTs on this. And before I go any further, it goes without saying, but I'll say it again. Um, this is, what I'm about to do is uh, dangerous. You probably better have a decent idea of what you're doing, and protect your hands as best as possible, because you're dealing with high voltages and could hurt yourself a lot. So, or hurt the machine. Um, both would be pretty tragic at this point in life. So you have to be very careful. These are high voltages. You're going to be working in spaces where <clears throat> you can get yourself into trouble. So, so since this is a live machine, um, I will be taking some extra precautions. But what we're going to do is I'm going to walk through the various bits I got. And the first thing we're going to try and do is fix that squash on the left uh, side of the screen, which is currently the bottom. All right, we're here. Um, I have fairly thick rubber gloves on. These are 
they're actually pretty standard, but they're thick, they work, and uh, the other thing is, I'm going to be sticking metal tools in here, um, this for the horizontal control, and this will allow me to loosen the yoke. Uh, watch yourself, one slip, and say goodbye to your board, and you might get a nice fireworks show, but either way. Alright, so first things first, I've loosened the driver board here, as you can see, I don't want to move it too much because it is live, but it is in fact loosened. And I've done this because unfortunately the horizontal control faces the back of the machine and is therefore inaccessible. So I'm going to try and turn this back <clears throat> and move it forward a bit. Hopefully you can see it still. And I'm going to... Perfect. And I'm going to see if I can get this desquashified. So this inserts in there. You probably can't really see it, but if I get... Okay, are we in? Okay, we're in. All right, so I'm going to give this a turn. Oop, hey, we're coming, we're coming. Ooh, excellent. Oh, I want them to be about the same size on the left and the right. I think that's probably it. I think that's good. Let's hit the reset button. All right, we see the C on the cast prompt. That's good. Radio Shack Model 3 Basic. All right, so now it's readable. Now I'm going to very carefully, gloves on, and with a mostly plastic screwdriver, I'm going to loosen the, the deflection coil, the yoke. I've heard it called both, so. All right, I'll loosen the deflection coil, and I'm gonna, I can turn it. You can see as I turn it, the image on the screen rotates. And actually, okay, I like it right there. Okay, tighten down the coil. Okay. Now, we have our horizontal. The last piece I think I can look at here is on the back of the... Where's my phone? On the back of the coil are two deflection adjustments that I can use to adjust the centering and width. And they work together. So, I have one on the right and I have one on the left. And what I'm doing is, is, is they rotate around the outside of the yoke clockwise or counterclockwise, and I want to focus these so that they are relatively centered and also so that the screen is wide enough because the width is adjusted using these. So, okay, if I go, let's see, where's the other one? To watch my ass in here. Um, okay. Alright, I think that's where it's going to stay. It's fairly centered looks horizontally correct um, all right next item up for bids focus um, you don't want to mess with the focus until you kind of got it and so there's a potentiometer on the board um, that's less focus camera won't even show it that's more focus and that's actually about as focused as it's going to get and i think we're sticking with that okay i don't need to mess with the vertical hold the other thing is the vertical size. Oh, this is going to need some, some deoxid. That jumpiness is the control sucks. Okay, I'm going to have to deoxid that. But, all right, let's do this. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with the adjustments on this screen. <clears throat> is it perfect now? Um, as my first CRT, I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with it, and I can always come back and revisit it. It's not like I don't own the machine and can't just take it apart again. If I can get these damn gloves off. I'm not sticking my hands in there anymore. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just do a quick... I'm going to do a line count on the screen, and I'm just going to do that by just doing this. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, could it go a little higher or lower? Maybe. Um, perhaps it could go down the screen a little bit more, but you know, we'll play with this. I'll probably run some graphics and stuff on it and we'll revisit. But <clears throat> for my money, this machine is now <laughs> working. I actually fixed a CRT. Oh my god. This is very, very cool and I'm very excited about it. So let's do this. Let's um, put this back together. We're going to button the machine back up and take a look at it assembled in its glory. All right, everyone, so uh, back up and ready to go. I got my laptop sitting on top of this thing, probably just out of frame, but 
connected to the cassette port. So we're gonna power this up, should still work. And I have a cassette ready to go. Look at this, oh my God, it works. Um, so since it's pre-work, we're just uh, sticking with the uh, more appropriate beverages here. So this is a system tape. So I'm just gonna run that. Now the relay is a little light, so something may be wrong with that. And this is a uh, level two, but 500 baud tape. Oh, okay, at least the interface is working. The weak relay concerned me a bit. You'll still have to look at that. So while this is going, um, yeah, as soon as this is done, I'm just gonna try it out. We'll make sure it works, and then we're gonna wrap this video up, and we're gonna call the Model 3 restored in the shape that I got, you know, from in the state that I bought it in, 16K, Model 3 Basic, uh, diskless. It will remain diskless. I don't plan to put discs in it. However, I do have some extra stuff coming, so there will be more for this. It is going to get a RAM upgrade, and I will probably burn a copy of the Fred ROM and put it in. I probably won't buy a third Fred. I have two floating around here for the this Model 3 4 Series machines. So I probably won't buy one for this. I'll probably use either my converted Trisio or my actual Fred. Uh, but I don't think I need to buy a third one. And now we're just going to skip to the end of this so you don't have to watch the stars blink. Alright, so when we got to the end of the tape, the Play 2 Cast stopped. Or Play Cast 2, I should say. Play Cast 2 stopped. Um, the thing still is expecting something. So I think what will be next, I, I imagine it's just, just some funkiness between the machine and my, my, my laptop and this. So I might put the cassette recorder on it and just try and do some uh, do some futzing, but overall the machine is functioning. It works. This isn't going to do anything, so that's okay. But uh, the only thing I'm trying to figure out here is I mean, it might be making some drift on my trolls here. I still need to put some deoxid in on that that vertical size connector because you can see it's kind of it's a little jumpy there, and that's the V size pot. Oh, I know what happened. I bet this this program requires a 32k machine. I bet that's why it blew up. So yeah, um, this does have a memory upgrade coming, so I'll have to find a smaller uh, program to play into it. But hey, the machine works. I'm very happy with it. Let's just actually reset this and see if it'll work. Look at that. My TRS-80 Model 3 microcomputer. It works. It didn't work when I got it. There were two issues. Uh, the video driver board that came with it had an issue. Fortunately, I had a spare floating around that was analog from an early Model 4. And then there was a break in the deflection coil. Um, and then the yoke. The uh, horizontal coil had a break in it. And we found that and got that all fixed up. CRT adjusted and now it is ready for upgrades. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.